Hey, I'm Sean Cooper from Taking Back Sunday. When I, when I was a real little kid, I, I listened to music, whatever my parents were listening to, from like the Beatles to the Beach Boys. And then through my friends, older brothers and stuff, I got into like Guns N' Roses and, and Motley Crue and, and kind of the hair metal thing. And then as I grew up, I started listening to bands like Nirvana and they made it seem like it was something attainable. And my friends started buying guitars and getting instruments and stuff. I was like, hmm, this would be fun. And Nirvana made it seem attainable. And that's when we all started bands of our own. So it's like right then I was like, maybe this is a possible career when I was around 12 years old or so. And, but I never thought it would really amount to anything. And then once I started playing with the guys in Taking Back Sunday, I was like 19, 20 years old. Everyone kind of had a like-minded vision for where they wanted the band to go. I was like, okay, this is like the first time this is really happening. We were writing songs that I thought were really good. And um, I'm like, maybe we'll get a record deal out of this. That would be really sweet. And we did, and we put out our first record, Tell Your Friends, in 2002. And uh, I thought we'd tour through the summer, and then I'd go back to school and figure out, you know, what to do next with my life. And here I am, all these years later, and uh, I'm still not sure what to do with the next step in my life. I'm just lucky that I get to keep doing this. I'm your Everyone deals with success in different ways, and there were five guys going in complete different directions, and it was just utter chaos. We just didn't like each other. We didn't know how to deal with the success of being away from home for so long, and we, we just didn't know how to handle it. We all turned into different people. We all turned into raging alcoholics, and just we, we, were, we were constantly fighting. We were uncomfortable with the whole situation, so I just needed to take a break. I was doing a band called Straylight Run for the seven years that I was gone from Taking Back Sunday. And then we all kind of came back together. We grew up a lot and we, we kind of uh, reconciled all our differences and we, we realized that the time apart made us really like each other again and that there's a certain chemistry that the five of us have that we thought was kind of undeniable and there's something special that's greater than the sum of our parts when we get together. So we're just fortunate to have it and we just want to keep this thing going forever now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was weird. We, we just had no idea what we were doing. We had no idea what we got into when we first started. So um, I, I think it's really important. I think we have a certain bond now that if we didn't go through all those, those trials and turmoil and, you know, all that stuff, I don't think we'd be as strong today as we are, you know, had we not gone through all that stuff. So I think it's really important and it feels good to be back home. You know, like, that we, we really rely on each other. We work so well together, having been through all, all that stuff together. So I think it makes for a very strong team. I mean, I think, I think within the band, you know, I, I know the guys in the band all inspire me to want to be a better player, want to be a better songwriter. You know, maybe Adam or John will come up with a, a lyric that I think is really great. I'm like, you know, I want my bass lines to be better to, to match what they're doing. Or Mark and Eddie, they write a lot of guitar parts and stuff. And so like, maybe I got to bring some more to the table myself to kind of match. And then I think everyone kind of keeps one-upping each other. So the iron sharpens iron thing, I think is very, very prevalent within the band itself. And I mean, even with the label we're, we're at now, we're with Hopeless Records, and they work so hard and they're a young, enthusiastic team. They make us want to work hard day to day to write better songs because they are working so hard for us. So you want to match that too. So on that level, it, it's, it's the same thing for sure. You should change your name. Well, Matt won the world title in 2007, and I was like, I saw him on the Ultimate Fighter show. I was like, man, you know, I, I did martial arts as a little kid, and it was something that I'd always wanted to get back into. And I, I just didn't know the, the right way or what martial art to train, and I remembered, you know, jujitsu from the early days with Hoist Gracie winning the UFCs. And I was like, maybe, maybe I should get into that. Then when I saw Matt on the Ultimate Fighter, I was like, man, this guy seems really cool, and he seems like a guy I can identify with personally, you know? And, and at one time, he was basically the best in the world at Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I'm like, what, what better way? The guy, his, his, uh, his academy is 30 minutes from where I live. Let me drive down there and check it out. One of my best friends, his name is Nick Lamagna, he started training. He's had a couple of amateur fights, a couple of amateur boxing bouts and stuff. He was training there for a few months before I did. He's like, dude, you're gonna love it here. Please come down. 
So, you know, it was like one drunken night out at the bar, I was telling him this, and, you know, he's like, you know, I get it all the time from all my friends, but no one shows up on Monday. Saturday night, everyone's motivated to train. Monday morning, no one shows up. But I showed up Monday morning back in 2007, and I've been there ever since. I, I just, I did Shotokan Karate for like five years, from when I was five until I was 10. I was a brown belt as a little 10 year old. And I was, I was pretty good. I was winning tournaments and stuff. I was really competitive with it. But um, yeah, for some reason, I, I think when I got into music, I lost my focus a little bit. And then as I got older, I knew I needed to do something active. I hate running on a treadmill. I hate just working out. But if I got a guy trying to choke me or punch me in the face, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more motivated to be active. I like both. The gi's been getting a little tough on my fingers. So with all the grips and the grip fighting and stuff, I, I was pulling my fingers and, and playing the bass, you know, it was making me a little paranoid. So I've been concentrating more on no gi, but I've been doing Muay Thai a lot too and, and doing some wrestling in there too. It's just, it's just fun to branch out and try the different stuff. But I do like the gi a lot. You know, it's fun with all the different chokes and stuff you have there. And uh, I, I really enjoy it all. Like you play. I did, I did. I only, I only got to uh, got to catch up on Eddie Bravo's and Hoyler's match. I, I haven't caught up on the rest yet. We've had kind of crummy internet connection. So if I'm gonna pay the 20 bucks, you know, to get the event, I want a good connection where I can see it crystal clear. But yeah, that match was great. It was very exciting. Uh, you know, I'm who I, I, you know, I thought Eddie did great. Um, I, I, I love the Gracies and respect what they do, you know. Henzo is by far my favorite for obvious reasons, you know. It's, it's all in the family and stuff. But I thought, I thought Hoyler looked great at his, you know, advanced age and all that he's done competitively. So I'm like kind of middle of the road guy, you know. I respect what, you know, everyone is bringing to the martial arts and, and making it better, you know. Like you're playing, oh, Lord,